What is money? Money is a way to keep track of your labor. It's like a ledger of your labor. I've said this before and I'll keep saying it because that's what it is. Uh, it's sort of like you work eight hours this day, you get paid from this business, uh, whether that's at the end of the day or the end of the week, you worked eight hours. So by the end of the week, you worked 40 hours. Now you get paid something that shows proof of your labor. So we get paid. You get paid in cash. You get paid in digits. Um, that is in your bank account. That all is showing proof that you worked those 40 hours. Whatever whatever you, your rate is, you have a ledger saying, "Hey, I worked for this because of this amount of digits. This this many digits I have, or this much per paper cash I have, or this much whatever I have." That's showing proof that this is a labor I had because I did this. I'm exchanging my labor that I already did to you for this, this exchange of service, this exchange of a product or whatever, whether it's to your neighbor or to a business. So it's a ledger of your, your work. I mean, it's, it's what you, your blood, sweat, and tears your labor. So that's basically at its core what money is. Well, when money, they figured out, it was figured out that you need, you can't just barter everything, trade a chicken for a cow or whatever, or trade working on this vehicle for that chicken. I mean, that makes sense as a whole, but it gets really tough and really specialized if someone needs their vehicle fixed and the people who have the chickens don't work on vehicles, there's not an exchange there. So you need to figure out how to have some sort of thing to exchange with that everyone recognizes. Well, that came out and they were using gold and silver. Uh, in the Bible, it's gold and silver. In the Constitution, it's gold and silver only to be used as money for exchange. And that, I think, is the way to do it. Because gold, there's only so much. It's finite. It's finite, and you can't destroy gold, really. It is what it is. Silver, once again, there's only so much that can deteriorate. I mean, it can corrode, that kind of stuff. But it's still a precious metal. It's still monetary at its base. Gold and silver are recognized, and they're good in other things, too. So they have an intrinsic value. They're used in electronics, solar panels, they're used for uh, electric cars. They're used for a whole bunch of stuff. A great conductor, silver, and gold are high at their base. So they are intrinsically used. So they have an intrinsic use. Sorry, I step away. Um, so anyways, now I've read, and I'm, as you know, I believe China has banned a Bitcoin. I think this is the ninth time. So they're, they're making it illegal, which they have in the past. Well, what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is an open ledger, and that, once again, is it's, it's keeping track of your labor. It's an open ledger of your labor. And with that, that, there's only so much Bitcoin. So you can't, someone just can't make more Bitcoin like they do with the U.S. dollar and, and other currencies around the world. And what that does, as they make more digits, more dollars, it weakens the spending power of the stuff you have, you and I have. That was our labor, ledger of our labor. So as they're printing more or making more digits, our labor is becoming worth less and less because we're holding on to these ledgers of our labor in whatever form. It's becoming worth less and less. So there's less we can buy for it, less we can purchase with it. Less for our home, for electricity, you know, that kind of stuff, food. So they're stealing from us, basically. That's what it is. It's theft. So gold and silver, that's why they were supposed to be the standard and the things used, which from using gold and silver as your exchange for the country, for the world, no one makes money on that. I mean, the banksters... Because stuff, they really don't make a lot of money by printing 
and making more of it to make what's out there worth less as what they're getting, they're stealing off the top. They're skimming off the top. That's what it is. So why am I saying this? I'm saying this because of the Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrencies. With Bitcoin, it's an open ledger and it's spread out. The nodes are spread out all over the world. You can't, it can't really be hacked. I mean, it's, it's extremely difficult to hack. Near impossible to hack. But with that, now governments are putting their greedy little hands in there and trying to manipulate and control that, which overall is going to be difficult, but by taxation and controlling behavior, they may do something. They may do it, put some dance on this thing. Hopefully, hopefully not much. Hopefully people rise above and don't deal with it. Like taxation was temporary, income tax was temporary, and look at how that goes. Same thing with sales tax, property tax, and all that, and look at where we're at today. There's always constant taxes, more and more, because government. It's about controlling behavior. It's not because they need it. They absolutely don't need it if they can print whatever they want, whenever they want, and create whatever they want, whenever they want, like they have been for the last how many decades. That's why when they go to war, no longer see war bonds and that kind of stuff, um, which I talked about a little earlier. So I'm talking about this because it's a ledger of your labor is what it is. So just imagine this. Bear with me. If you belong to a community, whether it's a community of 10,000 people, and everyone at the meetings over time decide, you know what, we're done using the U.S. dollar for exchange. We're done using anything else for exchange within our community only. If you want to go out and do something else, you've got to spend whatever is allotted, whatever you need to, or barter with other people. But in this community, we're going to keep track of people's labor. So if you do work on a car for someone who lives down the road, and that person bakes some cookies for these people at this thing, and this other person builds some houses, while this other person um, works at the school, this other person works at the bank, this other person delivers mail, this other person X, Y, Z. You got the idea. Well, this person might have a car wash, this person might have you know, this other kind of shop, this person might have this other kind of shop. You know, it's just, you got all these things going on and instead of, instead of telling people, you gotta pay me in cash or um, I'm gonna go buy this with cash, go buy this with my credit card or my digits, don't accept it. This whole community of 10,000 people, do not accept it. What happens is there's one place that keeps a ledger of everybody's labor. Well, you worked this long at this place, or you worked for this place, or you helped, you know, in this person's house, you helped here, you helped there. This is really crude, an idea that I just I didn't dive into yet, really, but just think about it. So they got this ledger in order for you to get service throughout this little community of 10,000 people. You need to go look off your ledger, look off your ledger. Yes, you can buy this vehicle because you, we can just take it off your ledger. We'll you know, call this person and we'll do whatever and we'll take it off this ledger and then you can get it because this is the work you've done. Your labor, here we kept track of you have this much labor. So there. So crudely, in essence, that's what Bitcoin is. It's an open ledger, which this would be an open ledger. Yes. With the community, there's one company, one little uh, group of people, whether it's five individuals or what, they're keeping track of the ledgers, and it's human nature is, you know, it can always get corrupted. Always. I'm not saying it's perfect, but I'm just trying to put that out there as an example. With Bitcoin, you don't have that. You have so many, so many nodes out there and so many people double checking these, these exchanges over and over to make sure they're legit. And there's nothing wrong with it. And there's no hack, nothing beyond that. That's how Bitcoin works. Is it perfect? Maybe, maybe not. Um, I, I 
I believe there's other, there's other uh, cryptos out there that are private, so the government cannot see things. I think there's a pirate chain, uh, Monero. Um, there's a few are out there that I know of. Uh, there, are, there are a couple that you can turn on and off the privacy settings. Um, I don't know a ton about those, but I'm just, they're out there. Whether those are the right way to do it or not, that's for you to decide. So I just, I'm talking about this because I, uh, what is it, El Salvador now is accepting Bitcoin as a medium of exchange. That's their nation, nation's currency is Bitcoin, as they're recognizing. Is that good? It very well could be. It could be amazing for them. It could be uh, bad too. I mean, I have no idea. I'm leaning towards it's a great thing. I'm leaning towards it's a great window of opportunity here and for other people to latch on to. What would happen if this goes big and takes off and governments kept out of, the, out of this as much as possible? What would happen? Well, um, it's going to be the end of banks. Absolutely, it will be the end of banks. No one will deal with banks. You need, you need a loan, you need to, to do this or that, you will do it using Bitcoin in El Salvador. They'll have some way to do that. Right or wrong, there's going to be amazing ways to do it, I'm sure. Um, the Fed, Federal Reserve, and the power of governments, and all this printing, all this endless money creation, currency creation, this is going to go away. It's going to end. That would be an amazing thing. Is it going to hurt? Are there going to be big bumps? Absolutely. In the end, the end, I, I believe, it could be amazing. It could be uh, like it used to be, or, but better. Um, would that be the end of gold and silver? I, I think absolutely not, because it, it, gold and silver are your physical aspects of that. And that's why those need to be held on to. And I hear people say, well, Bitcoin this, Bitcoin that. I'm not saying, hey, Bitcoin's the only way. I'm just reading this stuff and I'm saying I should talk about it a little bit because I have learned some stuff about it. And I did read there was there's a place in Texas, a little community who's starting to use mobile phones on the Bitcoin network. That means there's no T-Mobile, no Quest. Uh, Quest, that's an old name. No AT&T, no Sprint, that kind of stuff. There's a Bitcoin network that cell phones are being used on. That's all they're operating. And I think that's amazing. So Bitcoin isn't just a, a possible cryptocurrency. There's so much more to Bitcoin itself. Just like Ethereum, there's, there's more than a currency there. I think Ethereum's horrible as a currency myself. That's just my opinion. But there's other cryptocurrencies out there too that have a lot of stuff going for them. So I, I would suggest people look into this stuff and look hard and dig in deep. Um, because things are here. I've been looking at this thing, this stuff for a long time and I haven't talked about it much at all because I've been under the radar about it because I don't want to get people going one way or the other. I'm just getting out there to say, think about it. Money needs to have some sort of value to it. Whether that's a ledger of your labor only, like Bitcoin, um, and people can't say that the dollars a ledger to labor. No, it's not. Absolutely, it's not because they print more and more. They create more and more of it. So it's not a ledger to labor. It's it's false. It's just this fake monopoly money, basically. It's faker than fake monopoly money. But anyways, I, this is. I just want to go over this a little bit, just to get people thinking about it and digging into it some. Um, they they can't make this illegal, in my opinion. Because if there's a community of 10,000 people doing that, keeping track of people's labor, how would government make that illegal? They absolutely would try, for sure. And their main reason for that is because they can't tax. They don't need the money. They don't need the funds. Tax is all about behavior, all about controlling behavior. And they want to be involved to control behavior. Without taxation, they have no other way to control behavior. Nothing. Period. Anyways, I hope this helps at all. Something. It's, this wasn't a really deep thought of mine. Not real thought out. I just threw some stuff down. I thought I should talk about this. Now, while it's a hot subject, 
and keep up, get people thinking um, to look into it some. But anyways, thanks for watching. You know, subscribe, share, like, that kind of stuff. And as I always, as always, stay vigilant. Protect yourself, your family, your health.